Hello, you beautiful students. As you know that in this course, we're going to talk about how to raise and bully. It's all about the fundraising. And I'm telling you that it's a very sophisticated task. You have to understand a lot of dynamics to know how to really reach to what is in your mind. Because definitely every business needs financial fuel. And that is fundraising. In this course, in this topic, we're going to go through different parts. We're going to talk about uh, actually how fundraising process work. We're going to get familiar with some terms, especially a lot of terminologies. If it's your first time, you're going to get really, really confused. I remember when I started my business, it took years to understand what means board of director at that level. So it's very important when you do have those information, you can avoid a lot of mistakes. You can have a better experience. It's all about experience. You have to do a lot of trial and error. And it's important to know some basic information. And I really want to give this to people because I got the pain myself of lack lacks of those knowledge. And I know how important it can be, how much time you can save. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to go through, I'm looking to my points. We're going to talk about how fundraising process work. And we go and talk about what is angel investors. We talk about the stages, pre-seed, seed, post-seed, series A and series B until IPO. But in this course, we're just going to focus on pre-seed till uh, at the series A. And then after that, if you reach to that point, you don't need me. <laughs> you have a lot of team and people to tell you what to do. And also we're going to talk about, we're going to get familiar with something very, very important and interesting, safe notes, which uh, devised and in, in invented somehow by YC or Y Combinator. It's a great way to raise money and not lose your ownership. And you'll talk about it. And then we'll go, when we talk about all this kind of stops, we go and discuss about the important part, how to create a killer pitch deck. It's a headache. But it's so simple when you know how to do it. For me, it took a lot of trial and error. I made a lot of mistakes. I went to many presentations in front of many investors. I did really, really bad in the wrong way. I didn't know that. And I was just trying to understand how to do these stuff. But, but I, will, I will talk about some of my own mistakes. And you don't need to do that. Uh, if you're smart, that's what you're going to do. And then we'll talk about the structures of uh, pitch that we do some one together. And then after that, we explain about something very important, even before doing the, uh, the pitch deck presentation, is building invest in relationship with investors. That's something really interesting, and that can help you a lot. Because imagine if you have some sort of connections with those investors, before you go to the meeting and pitch your presentations, you feel a lot better. And they also know you, and there's a better connections. Then we talk about how to pitch uh, your um, uh pitch deck, how to pitch your pitch deck, a lot of pitches around here. And then I'll go to some of the common tough questions that investors may ask. And you have to be ready for that because these questions became standard. You have to be ready for that. If you don't know it, it means you haven't done your uh, whole work. That's why we're going to talk about them. And then finally, we're going to end it up with what you're going to do after uh, investor, you know, verbally commits. I'm telling you that happened to me many times you get verbal Yes, but none of them into uh, the real investment. But there are certain things that I know now that you have to do to make sure those verbal commitments turn into really official and you get your check. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to end it out with some sort of examples. And then I introduce you some resources, some books, some YouTube channels that it can be really helpful to uh, get familiar with all of them. So that's, that's, that's all about we're going to talk about it. I I am um, going to end up end, end up this uh, intro to the course with one very important uh, advice. You know what? Something that you have to understand. It's a little bit ironic that you have to ask your question that should you even raise money? This is a very important question. So I don't want you guys to think a little bit about it and ponder uh, because uh, it looks ironic. This is a course to talk about how to raise money. But I want to start with this question: Should you really raise money or not? You have to ask these questions from yourself. Let me tell you something. When you do fundraising, you are giving up a portion of your ownership, your business, your baby, your life. And that's important. Sometimes some investors, they raise more than they need. And I did this today, when years later, 10 years later, the company is very valuable and they want to go to IPO or there's the acquisition, a big company come and purchase your company. Then that is the time that you understand that you raise two million US dollars while you could start the business by one million US dollars, but now you have smaller portion of the company and that 
more 100 million new scholars. But that's not the time that you can press Ctrl Z and then back and then revert stuff that'll work. You have to really ask yourself, is really, do I need raise the money? And if I need, how much I need? And should I go to venture capitalists or there are other ways to do that? And that's just what I'm trying to uh, tell you about it. To me, if you can, if you have the chance to get away with securing money through a Buddhist trap, it means that, let's say, you already have a small business and that business is producing enough cash flow that you start your new business. Do that. If you can do that, if you can secure it, or, for example, if you can do some crowdfunding, or you can get grant, or even you can get loan from the bank, there's no point that you start the business by giving away a part of the business to someone else, especially at the very beginning. The dilution of the company in that phase is very difficult. Nobody, you, you, you may become the next in Facebook, or, or, or maybe become a kind of good small uh, business, but no matter what, the valuation at the beginning is not clear, and some of the people undervalue what you want to do of overvalue. So it's, it's, if you have such a kind of choice, that, or you, who knows if you have a rich daddy or mommy that can give you some money, that's the best. You have to really take that one and try to avoid fundraising at the very beginning. And again, I know that this is a little bit awkward. At the beginning of the course, my first lesson for you is to not raise money if you can. But anyway, but the question is what type of business uh, should raise the money? To me, typically, uh, those high growth tech businesses, those that they, 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 they think that they can sell their business to for hundreds of millions of you know, dollars, or they have the plan, or you have the plan to go public, means IPO, uh, initial public uh, uh, offering, which that means 100 times your company really, boom, became a lot bigger, and that makes sense because you need, you need support. Uh, you can't go to that level without fundraising, to absolutely. But if you have this plan to build up a business at some level and then sell it for a smaller exit, uh, it's better to not. But in some cases, it's okay. But, but it's likely that you're in, 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 you know, I think your investors will be disappointed uh, because they're looking for high return. Typically in venture capital, the VCs, they're looking for something like 100x. That means the company worth 10 million now and, and, and 10 years later, it's 100 times more. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for such kind of grouse. And that's how it makes us big success. They're looking for that one. So if you get the money and then decide for a small uh, exit, you know, they're fully disappointed. So if that's you, if you want to build the next big tech company and you want to get that 100x bad mission, definitely you're in the right place. I'm going to talk about it. And in next part, in next course, we're going to talk about uh, different stages of the fundraising. We start from the uh, pre seed then we'll talk about the C, and then the post C, and then Series A. And you will get more about them to know what means uh, safe notes, what means pre-value, post-value. They're very important formations. We're going to do some math, a little bit math and examples to understand. So that's all. Remember, you will have to think. Your homework is think that should you need to raise money. And if you think you need, how much is that? We'll talk about it soon. Have a good day. Happy raising.